Hello, my name is Meg Randall, and I am in the Queer Studies class. Um, this is my show and tell presentation, and I struggled for a while to decide like what I was going to show because um, though I am um, a woman who also is bisexual, um, like I'm also like white, and I'm also an artist, and I'm also a musician, and I'm also a student, and like a bunch of other things, and I wasn't sure like which part of my identity that I really wanted to showcase. And then I realized that I had a collection of uh, paintings that actually really represented this whole project really well. So here we go. Um, this is the themes of intersectionality and positionality in my art. So yes, I'm an artist. Um, I've actually done um, many different showcases and um, one of which was actually um, in our own UH. We have a place called Third Space Gallery. Um, if you haven't heard of it, it's actually on the third floor, I believe. Um, and basically it's a little gallery space and you send in your art and they decide whether or not you make the cut, um, but it goes all year round um, from my understanding. But basically um, in, I believe it was 2020, 2020 or 2021, um, I did, I was one of the first people that had their work in this gallery. And it was a really cool accomplishment for me, especially because I go to school here and I really have a lot of pride for my school. And it was a really interesting opportunity for me because I was put in it uh, by myself, which means that I had to completely design my own show, um, like where the paintings were going to go, how I was going to represent these paintings like in their own space, which was a really cool opportunity. So this is the um, this is the main collection that I wanted to show you guys. I'm going to talk about two different paintings. I'm not going to go over all of them just because there's so much going into each of these. Um, but I wanted to pick two of my favorites that I feel like are I worked really hard on um, in the sense that like how I wanted to show them in the gallery. And um, yeah, but I will go through each of them for you. Um, this one right here is called... Um, It's called um, Not Immune, sorry. Um, and then this one is called Seizure, the one that has What is Wrong With Me. Then the one that has like a heart that's like a bomb, that is actually called um, Anxiety. Um, and the one at the bottom is called Harassment, right here that's split between a hand. The black and white one is just called Me. Um, and then this one that's got multiple different um, blue canvases, that is called Depression. And then the two that we're going to be talking about is Pride, which has the red frame around it. And then Dyslexic Conflict is the last really big one that is just a portrait of me um, in a collage. And uh, I'll get into each of those. So this is actually from the gallery. I just wanted to show y'all um, about it. This is actually how I showed it when you first walked in and then that's the flyer that I made for it. So this whole, this whole um, collection, like I had been thinking about it since I was, I want to say at least like when I was 11, that's when I first thought of it. I was like, it would be really cool. And I, I got some influence from Frida Kahlo and from um, um, from other artists, but, but mostly Frida Kahlo, um, because I felt like she was really empowered in the way that she used part of her identity and part of her struggles in her life as inspiration for her own work. And I felt like she did a really good job of that. It didn't seem conceited or anything like that. It just seemed like really powerful. Um, so yeah. So here's Dyslexic Conflict. And 
basically the this painting was one of the first that I ever did um, it was mainly about my struggles with being dyslexic and ADHD my learning disabilities basically um, so I I used actually assignments and I actually have an agenda that I write all my stuff on it's basically um, a collage of all the different tools that I have had to learn in order for me to go farther in my life because for a really long time up until around third grade or so um, I really struggled I could not read very well I also um, could not really pay attention when I would read I would skip lines and also the words would move around so it was just basically almost impossible for me to read um, it didn't mean that I didn't try, but eventually you start to just get a little bit of a really bad relationship with reading when you can't do it and it's like everyone else, you know, you get picked on, you get called upon by teachers to read. And that is always like, was always like my main fear at that time. I was terrified of it. It was literally my, my worst nightmare getting called on because I honestly doing that by myself was one thing but doing it in front of an audience was a complete other thing and uh, yeah so basically after that I learned that highlighting the words really helped me as far as like isolating the different points of like a sentence and from there I was able to kind of like retrain my brain to read and like with the disability like it doesn't go away or anything like that. I still have really bad days where if I'm not really focusing, I can't read. And it's really heartbreaking because I'm an academic and I love school now. But back then it was a completely other situation. Um, and actually like for this painting, I, you know, for this whole collection really, I had a lot of emotional reaction to doing it because it was like reliving traumatic experiences from my past um that were just really difficult for me um but yeah and I used a lot of primary colors because I felt like that was kind of going to capture how I evolved from being a really like young kid to being an adult and living with this condition, which is why I'm being drawn a little bit more maturely. So this is about like, I did this when I was um, in my freshman year of college, I believe. And uh, it was supposed to just like be kind of this thing that I was just doing for fun. And then from this painting, it really made me feel like, okay, I can do this. I should do this just because I have a lot of different things that I've gone through and I'm I always felt really alone in that and to have a collection based upon those different things where it was about me but also about other people who have my conditions and for them not to feel very alone so but this is actually how I put it in the gallery and I wanted to explain these things um, because I felt like they were, it was just such a cool thing I did. I was really proud of it because I really wanted to, it to be an immersive experience because the whole point was for you to feel like you've been in my life. Like I wanted you to feel like you knew me, like you knew yourselves. And so I put this in the corner, like near the very front, like beginning. And you can see that in the slides before here with the first shot with the people in it um, viewing it. Um, so basically at the top, I actually had different photographs of me from since I was a, a kid, like a little kid until that point. And you could see how much my personality and the way that I presented myself changed. Um, and it changed actually a lot in a very short amount of time because this is going on for years and sometimes I'd, I'd look completely different if you even looked at me like it would probably be really hard to recognize me and later I would realize that I had BPD which is um, borderline personality disorder and it actually is it runs in my family 
Um, I actually have not struggled with it as much because I had I had learned how to express myself pretty early on. But there are moments where I struggle. But the main thing that I notice is that the way that I dressed changed significantly. Like I was just kind of changing the way I looked a lot. And a lot of things that people don't realize about mental illnesses is that a lot of times you feel normal. Like in the grand scheme of things, you feel pretty normal. And then you realize looking back that you still struggle with this because you're still changing the way you look, changing the way you present yourself in order to like fulfill this certain thing that you think other people want you to look like or want you to speak like or want you to think like. And it's kind of been this struggle that I didn't even realize I was going through, through this whole time of my life until recently. Um, And even um, after this, the show, when I did all that, I actually didn't know. So it was kind of really interesting, like to look back on these photos, because whether or not I knew it, I was definitely representing that kind of identity and that kind of like struggle in this whole collection. But as you see, I put um, diff- those different frames. Those are actually, um, I actually had written word and paintings in this collection. So I would actually write um, little journals or like little poems that would go with this. And one of the main people in my life at the time that I was struggling so hard with my learning disabilities was my granddad. And uh, he actually was the one that was like, don't give up. Like, I know it's hard, but don't give up because, you know, this is this is like your learning. This is you being able to take power back from like yourself because you're the, your own worst enemy. And he was just my my rock. Um, and one of the first books I ever read was Frankenstein. And it was actually right after, like completely, like all the way through where I didn't skim it and then look it up online and all that. That was Frankenstein. And he passed away when I was around 13, 14. Um, So I had not read a whole book all the way through, like a real book, until I was around 13 or 14. Um, And I read it right after he passed away. I remember being just absolutely just destroyed when he passed away. He was like a father figure to me. Um, and I really wanted him to be a part of this, this, this accomplishment that I had. Um, so I, you see, like I put photos of him and I on there and I put the Frankenstein book on the table. And when you read the um, essays that I did over here, um, they actually, when I was writing them, I was using old notebooks that I had had um, and journals that I had written. And a lot of them were like really sm- like short. But I remember like what it felt like to be that age and to be dealing with all these things. And so I kind of would ad lib and like it was really therapeutic. But I'm not going to lie. I definitely cried at one point um, just because it was just so real for you and you didn't realize you know when you're writing it's like wow I have not gotten over a lot of it I haven't even touched it um and at the end it kind of became like a letter to my granddad who had passed away um telling him how thankful I was for him and it was just a really like it was a really emotional collection (laughs) Like, people that had gone in there, I actually had note cards for them to write on. And just to give me feedback. And they would say how much they were just kind of floored by how real I was. Like, I didn't hide anything from anybody in this. And it was very scary, but it was also very freeing as an artist just to kind of, like, take yourself out of the equation and just put it all out there. Um, But, yeah. So that's actually, like, the way it looked. I thought it was, like, really great. Um, But, yeah. And so this is the other painting that I wanted to talk about. And it's a little bit more on the nose for this class. 
Um, this call is called Pride, and I actually had done the sketch the of my portrait like around high school, and I had kept it. And at that point, I really wanted to include a painting in this collection that was about my identity, um, like my sexual identity. And I had struggled a lot. Um, I had gone to private school and middle school um, that was very Presbyterian, and it was very nonconforming to anything that was going on during that time. There was nothing in place to protect anyone like me there. Um, in fact, it was very much something that, you know, if you didn't know that you were that way and you just kind of gave off cues, other people could see that and they would perceive it as like a threat to them. Um, and I'll go more into that, of course. Um, but basically, so this is actually how I presented it. Um, basically, so when I was, when I was in kindergarten, I knew this girl, her name was Alexis, and she was the first person that I ever kissed, and it was during nap time, and I kissed her on the cheek, and she kissed me on the cheek back, and when you're a kid, all you know is that, like, if you love somebody, you kiss them. And so that was just kind of like the innocent way of thinking about it. Like there was nothing, I was a kid. So we were both sent to the principal's office. And at the time, I was not aware that what I did was, was considered wrong. I had no idea. Like I had zero idea. And I apologize, my dog is over there. Um, but I had no idea. And I did not know the consequences of what would happen or else I would have never have done it. Um, but after that day, I never saw Alexis again. Um, she was in a very um, Mexican, very traditional household. Um, they were Catholic, very Catholic. And I, I don't know what happened to her. I never heard about what happened to her and it was very scary because like we were I was her best friend like at that point like we were always at each other's houses and then randomly she just disappeared and I felt like it was my fault and I never quite forgave myself for that until this moment when I did this show and basically that's why you see the photographs. That one photograph that's on top of the table with the flag, that is actually something that we did at a sleepover together. And then the other one is of us at the zoo, I believe. Sorry, I sneezed, y'all. Um, but basically then I have the poems after that. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I have the um the essays after like up above that, and that actually talks about my time in middle school. I was not aware, but I after that moment, I kind of stopped doing that, and I I didn't like being that way, being like my bisexual self. Like I had just completely that had completely terrified me my friend just being sent away and everyone just kind of judging me. My mom had told me afterwards that she actually had gotten the phone call and that she never told my dad. Um, he had no idea that this had happened. And, but my grandmother owned the school, the elementary school, and she knew. And that actually resulted in her completely cutting me off once my granddad had passed away. So it was, it was a very hard thing. And I knew that it was because of that incident. And I knew that she knew that I was different and that that immediately, even though we were family, she immediately like cut me off once she passed away. And so 
this right here. Sorry, y'all. Um, and basically, when I went to middle school, it was really hard because this was me starting over. And I had cut my hair, like, really short at one point. Um, and, like, it was kind of asymmetrical. Like, like, here, it was kind of, like, to here. But then here, it was, like, really short. Um, it was kind of an asymmetrical haircut, and I guess I looked lesbian, like, we'll say that, like, for people that, you know, are clearly very bigoted, they immediately assumed that I was because of that haircut, which is really silly, um, and I had had, you know, sexual harassment issues with other students in the class, and then I cut my hair like that. And immediately, it got way worse, but they thought that I was gay, and so they immediately were coming after me for that as well. I remember them putting the F word on a um, dry erase board in one of the classrooms before I came in, and I saw it, and I was just so mad. I, I was so mad. It was like, the first time that had ever been used against me, and it was in middle school, and it was by people my own age, and I erased it before the teacher got in. Um, I wish that I had been more candid with my mother and my dad about all of it, but basically, that essay is about the mothers going behind my back and my mom's back and my dad's back, All the moms of all the kids in this private school would meet on Sundays and they were trying to make a petition so that I couldn't change in the girls' changing room because they said that I was gay. Even though I had not said anything like that. I didn't even know what I was. All I knew that there was gay, lesbian, and then you were straight. I didn't know any other orientation. And so I just felt like an anomaly for most of my life. So it it was definitely very difficult for me as a person to deal with that but this this whole show was so great because it really just was I felt empowered by it um I felt like none of these things could bother me anymore and I got such feedback saying like thank you so much for being there I did I felt so alone before I came in to your show and I realize now that I'm not alone and that's all I wanted with this show um but I really hope you guys enjoyed my show and tell um please ask me any questions in the group chat about my art if you guys are interested and thank you